Hey guys, this is Chubbs again, and today I just wanted to show you all a little tutorial in SnapMap. Now, I know that SnapMap is a really easy and intuitive editor to use, uh, but at the same time it has a surprisingly deep and sophisticated logic system built into it. Uh, this is uh, pretty much like a visual scripting language that's built into the editor. And so because of that, you know, maybe uh, if you've never programmed or scripted before you know it, it may turn out to be pretty difficult for you to to sort of get the hang of or to jump into so I just thought I would maybe do some tutorials like this to help you get accustomed to it and also show you how to do some cool things so uh, today our goal is to make it so that uh, we must have a core in both of these power stations in order for this door to be unlocked uh, so if we go here to the door uh, you can see that it's just a regular locked door. Now even though it's red, this is not a red key card door, so don't mistake it for that. What I did is I just went in and uh, I made the color of the door red, but that's it's just a cosmetic thing. I just did that uh, to make it so that uh, the player could associate uh, the red door with these two red power stations. Just, just a cosmetic thing. Um, but that's our goal, to make it so that uh, the power stations must have cores in them for the door to be unlocked. And I've also just put uh, two rooms here on each side of our starting location. And both of these rooms contain one power core. So uh, whenever you're dealing with a, a situation where you want to sort of count uh, up to a certain number uh, and then do something, it's usually best to use a uh, an object or a, a a logic related thing uh, in this editor that's called count. You can access that by pulling up the object list, going over to the flow category, and then just navigating to this symbol here with one, two, three, and you'll see that it's called count. Uh, so this is just a, a counter that you can give a certain number to count up to, and then once it reaches that number, an action will be performed. So we'll just go ahead and choose this object, and I'm just going to sort of place it between our power stations. It really doesn't matter where it's at. I'll just put it there, though, just for easy access and uh, so that it will also maybe make it a little bit clearer what we're, what we're doing here. Uh, so remember that we're dealing with two power stations, and therefore uh, we're going to be dealing with two power cores. Uh, so if we pull up the count's properties uh, by highlighting it and pressing X, you'll see that by default the max count is set to 3. Uh, this is the number that it needs to count up to before an action happens, before it does something. Uh, so we don't want it to be 3, we want it to be 2 uh, because again we're dealing with two stations and two cores. So let's go ahead and just reduce that to 2 and we'll just leave the starting value at 0. Uh, that's pretty much just assuming that we're starting with both of those stations empty but if you wanted like a situation where one of those stations would have a core in it at the beginning uh, you could change it to one uh, but we're, we're just going to leave it at zero and just assume that both of the stations are, are going to be empty at the beginning of the game alright now what we want to do is we want to make it so that when we put a core in both of these stations it increases count by one and that's really easy to do. All we have to do is highlight one of these stations, press G to bring up the logic wheel, and then just go to on given. This is what this is pretty much the event whenever you give this station a core. And then just link it over here to count. And then when you click, you'll get another logic wheel. This is what you want to happen. And we will just choose add. So this just says whenever we give this power station a core we're going to add one to count. One is just the default amount that you're adding. You can pull up the properties here and change how much is added, but we're just going to stick with one because uh, that's going to work for our situation. Now we'll just go ahead and do the same for this power station. On given, add. All right, so we've set it up now so that when we give these power stations a core, it's going to add one to count. And if count becomes 2, uh, in which case it, it will, with our logic here, if both of these stations have cores in them, uh, we want this door to be unlocked. Because remember, this door is locked right now. So what we can do, we can highlight count, press G, and then under counts events, we can go to, go to on count reached. This is what's going to happen when 
that max value, which we remember we changed it to two, is reached. So we'll choose this, we'll link it over to the door, and we'll just say unlock. All right, so let's go back over the logic one more time here. So for both of these power stations, whenever we give the station a core, it's going to add one to count, and count starts at zero, remember, and the max count is two. And so whenever it reaches that max count, it's going to unlock the door. So let's go ahead and just hop in and play and let's see what happens whenever we uh, put the cores into the power stations. So if we go up to the door first, you can see it, I, I, I put in a message there that says requires power. You can type whatever message you want, but you can see that the door is locked. It's not letting us open it. So let's go ahead and grab one core and put it into the left station. You can see it's still telling us that the door requires power. It's not not letting us open it yet. So let's grab this second power core and put it into the right station. And now you can see the door is opening. Now you might think this is all that we need to do and that it's you know it's it's all fine and dandy, uh, but there's actually an issue here, and this is a one of the gotchas that sort of comes with scripting and programming. You know, sometimes you'll have problems that you won't catch at first, but you know, through thorough playtesting, the problems will kind of uh, come to the surface and hit you. Uh, so here's what the issue is. Let's just return to the editor and then let's go back and just play one more time, and I'll, I'll sort of demonstrate what's happening or uh, what the what the issue is that I'm kind of hinting at here. So remember that the logic says that if we add a core, uh, it's also going to uh, add one to count. So let's go here, let's get the core, and let's put it into the left station. Okay, so one has just been added to count. Now here's the problem. With these power stations, you can go up and you can pull the cores out. So what happens if we go up and pull the core out? and we put it back in. Well, the door is unlocked. See, what happened is uh, it registered one being added to count again, so it technically reached two. So what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to put a condition that says when we take one of those cores out, we subtract one from count. That way we won't have a situation where you can you know, just pull, a, uh, put a core in, pull it out, put a core in, pull it out, just keep doing that to increase the count. We want to make it so that when you pull a core out, count decreases. And thankfully that is really easy to do. We can pretty much do it just like we did uh, the adding. So what we can do is we can go to the station, pull up its events here, and then, t then say on taken. This is what happens when a core is taken out. Go back over to count and then say subtract and let's do the same for this station on taken subtract one from count and this is ugly here let's try and make it look a little bit cleaner all right that's that'll that'll suffice okay so our logic is much better now so we're saying if you give this power station a core add one to count if you take a core from this station, subtract one from count. So this will totally fix our issue. Uh, we'll go ahead and actually play the map just to demonstrate it. All right, so let's go ahead and let's grab the core here on our left. And let's try, let's try and break it like we did before. So you can see it's locked. Let's put the core in door is still locked and let's see if we can break it by taking it out and putting it in again just like we did before and there we go you can see now it's not letting us fool it it's not letting us uh, sort of exploit it so now we really do have to have both stations uh, or we, we have to we really have to have cores in both stations in order for this door to operate and we can prove that by going over here and getting this core, 
and putting it in on this side and now it should open so there we go so the logic is pretty much foolproof it's working much better now there's one more thing that we want to add to this to make it uh, perfect or what I would call perfect so what we want to do remember that we can still go up and pull the cores out of these stations now this door requires power to open or at least that's what we say so it doesn't really make sense that we can uh, put cores in both of these stations and have the door you know be unlocked and then pull a core out and have the door still operate and let me just play the map again to sort of show what I'm talking about you know I probably should have done this uh, just a second ago when I last tested but I'll, I'll show you guys what I mean here we still have one little issue that uh, you know it's, it's not necessarily a gameplay issue uh, although in some cases it could be it, it's really just a, a, a cons consistency issue so you can see we need power to open this door and so whenever we provide power by putting in two cores the door opens however here's where the consistency issue comes into play if we go up and we take a core out the door is still unlocked you know it's it's functioning even though before it needed power to function so we you know it's 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 inconsistent it doesn't make sense so we can fix this really easily too thankfully uh, all we have to do is we can uh, go here to our count object and we can say when count is not reached go up to the door and just choose lock and once again we have an ugly mess here we'll try and make this look a little bit nicer alright that looks a little bit better okay so what we just did we made it so that whenever the count is not reached uh, if, if we go up and we take a core out and the count is no longer two then we're, we're gonna relock the door uh, but if, if the count is reached if you know if a core is in both stations then the door will be unlocked so let's go back and let's test it and really the door should function perfectly now we'll just sort of demonstrate it so first let's just do a thorough test here we'll go up you can see the door requires power it won't open we'll grab a core and we'll take it back to the left station you can really do it in any order we'll, we'll just put this one in the right station just to prove it you can see it still requires power it won't open let's grab this and let's put it over here into the empty one over on the left and now that we have power in both cores or in both stations we can pass through however with the new logic that we just added in if we if we go up and we remove one of these cores guess what the door is locked again and so we will need to resupply it with power again so you can you know you can go up and you can take these cores out but if you want to open this door again you're gonna have to maintain power to it by having two cores in these stations and that's that pretty much sums it up so uh, you know this this could lead to some really interesting map designs you could have players search off in different directions for these cores and then have to bring them back uh, this is almost like a uh, like a double key card door in a way if you think about it it's almost like a uh, like a door that requires two key cards it's a a very interesting gameplay concept and the fact that you can go up and remove these cores also uh, adds some some very very interesting gameplay possibilities i'm sure you can just think of all the different things you can do with that uh, but i hope this helps you guys out uh, uh, if you have any questions about this let me know and this is chubb signing out